Now, in his first days as president, Donald Trump has taken swift action on U.S. trade policies, withdrawing from the Trans-Pacific Partnership and vowing to renegotiate a decades-old trade deal between the U.S., Mexico and Canada. Now, Trump has also vowed to hit companies that manufacture goods outside the U.S. and try to sell within the states with a tariff. Bloomberg's Kevin Cirilli is standing by in Washington with more analysis. Senator Mike Lee, thank you for joining us today. You introduced a bill recently that would give Congress control over or authority over approving any executive action taken by the president, in this case President Trump, over whether or not to increase tariffs or to approve withdrawing from a trade agreement. Why did you think it was necessary to do this? This is part of a decades-old problem that's been created by Republicans and Democrats alike in which Congress has handed over its authority to the executive branch, sometimes to executive branch bureaucrats. And we see that with our $2 trillion in regulatory compliance costs each year. And sometimes in other more discreet uh, areas like uh, foreign relations or here, trade. Right, but the, your critics are saying that you're taking away power. You're trying to take away power from President Trump. Is that what you're trying to do? What I'm looking at is the Constitution, which gives power to Congress to make laws, and specifically to make laws, among other things, uh, uh, about things like tariffs. So we have things like the... Uh, there are provisions in the Tariff Act of 1930, there are provisions in the Trade Act of 1974 that give immense uh, discretion to the executive branch to decide just unilaterally to make certain decisions to raise tariffs. And that is a policy decision tantamount to making law. This is not the executive branch's fault. It's not the president's fault. This is Congress's fault, and Congress needs to reclaim but, but its own power. Just count. quickly, and then I want to get to the Supreme Court. You, do you agree with, the, with President Trump's actions on trade policy? Well, those policies are still unfolding. It's not entirely clear what actions he wants to take in this area. But my concern is a deeper one. It's a broader one. It's one that has been brewing since long before we knew who the president would be. Uh, it, this is a question about the people's elected representatives in Washington, in the House and in the Senate, being able to make law, which is what we're here to do. Supreme Court, we're hearing that President Trump will announce next week who he will choose to appoint to the Supreme Court. You were on that short list that he put forth during the campaign. Are you interested in becoming a Supreme Court nominee? And have you had any discussions with the White House since Election Day about it? Oh, of course I am. Uh, I, I'm a lifelong Supreme Court watcher. I've been watching Supreme Court arguments since I was 10 years old. Honored to be considered and on the list. But regardless of what choice President Trump makes on this, it's going to be a good one. The people on that list are, are good, and we're going to get that person confirmed. I look forward to pushing through that person once uh, he or she's been nominated. Have you had conversations since election? Of course. Uh, of course I have. With uh, the White House? Uh, 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 along with many other issues. Um, Specifically uh, about you being appointed to the Supreme we've, Court? We've talked about the issue broadly. All right. I think, uh, Caroline, my colleague has a, has a question. Yes, Senator Lee, thank you very much for joining us. Caroline Hyde in San Francisco. I'm going to take it back to technology, if I will, because you were just talking there about trade policies. And, and it seems as though at the moment Donald Trump is very much trying to fight cheap labor abroad with, with trade tariffs and the like. But is not actually the real threat to jobs automation? And is that a government responsibility to help retrain or are companies? Uh, no, I don't think that's a government responsibility. We have to uh, look at technology in much the same way we look at other types of competition. What our job is uh, from the standpoint of government is to make sure that government isn't putting undue burdens on companies. If they face enough pressures from other areas. Uh, we can at least make sure that we are no longer uh, the country with the highest corporate tax rate in the developed world. We can at least make sure that we're no longer putting $2 trillion in regulatory compliance costs on uh, Americans every single year. And all those costs, keep in mind, get passed down to America's poor middle class who pay for those costs through higher prices, diminished wages, unemployment, and underemployment. That's why there's a lot we can do to increase the competition of American manufacturers, of American employers, and to give more opportunities to American workers uh, by focusing on those issues, by reducing those barriers that the government itself has put in place. And I wanted to get into one of your other key roles, of course, because you're on the subcommittee when it comes to antitrust competition policy. There's a fascinating argument of brewing between two key tech heavyweights, Apple and Qualcomm. Is there a particular view you take on what Apple is doing in terms of suing Qualcomm in terms of its licensing processes? N no, look, I'm not getting into that right now. Uh, that will play itself out, and I don't have any interest in commenting on that. 
Yes. Senator, last question for you. If they offer you the Supreme Court job, would you accept it? Oh, of course I would. And have you had conversations today since with the administration today, since this meeting, this week, about that? How serious are we? Not today. Not today. I have not had yesterday? any such conversations today or yesterday. Thank All right. You. Senator Mike Lee, we appreciate your time. Thank you. That was Bloomberg's Kevin Cirilli live with Senator Mike Lee for you. Now, both Yahoo and Verizon.